What does Lucille Ball have to do with consignment? Let's find out. This is a Little Debbie, a bite-sized version of the longer podcast, Upcycling with Deb. I'm your host, Deb Colometta. I wrote a number one best-selling book called Best Offer, Best Life. And it's about online yard sales and how you can use them to create the wealth that you want in every area of your life. If you follow me on social media, you know that I'm an I Love Lucy super fan. It's my favorite show. I can win against anyone in an I Love Lucy trivia thon. And throughout quarantine, we've been watching at least an episode a day with our kids. We needed something to lighten the mood at the end of the day. Virtual learning has been really draining for us mentally and it's been exhausting for my kids. It's just been a lot for us. So one way we can kind of lighten the mood and do something as a family that doesn't really take a lot of exertion during the week is to pop in one of my I Love Lucy DVDs and watch the show together. It really changes the whole vibe of the house and it helps my kids unwind and laugh at the end of the day, which I think is important as they head off to bed. And that gives me such joy. I love that I can laugh with Ray about the jokes about marriage or getting older or money. And my kids love the slapstick or they love the reactions by Fred Mertz. And, you know, this may not win me any popularity points, but I love that they really wanted to give people an escape from the everyday. And that was a decision that they had made. And without even meaning to, they in a way were political. Back then it was considered an interracial marriage between Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz. And to have Lucille Ball as the first TV executive owning her own television and movie studio was amazing. So they were trailblazers by virtue of what they were doing and it speaks for itself. They didn't have to lecture to people or try to force an agenda. They just lived it. And I really love that. So what does Lucille Ball have to do with consignment stores? Something you might not have known is that Lucille Ball herself shopped at consignment stores. Yes. So here's how I found this out. I've been on a run lately of reading biographies and autobiographies about people who had connections to the I Love Lucy show. So I started with Jess Oppenheimer, who was the head writer, producer, one of the creators of I Love Lucy. Oh my gosh, that book was so funny. And of course, it was produced by Syracuse University Press, where I went to school. So of course, I knew I had to have it anyway, even if it was not good, but it was excellent. And uh, I was just laughing because a book written by a comedy writer is going to be funny many times. And it was, it did not disappoint. I loved his perspective on the show. I read a book by Desi Arnaz. I did enjoy it, but it was like kind of too much information. Sometimes when you read a biography, you have to ask yourself, I wonder if these people would want this information shared now that they're not living anymore. You feel like you're looking a little too deeply into their lives. Of course, his was an autobiography, but still it kind of like, I like to think of him more as Ricky Ricardo than maybe Desi Arnaz. And I read a book, a biography about Vivian Vance. What an incredible story she has. But again, I felt like, I don't know, too much information, TMI in some ways. I wonder if she would want us to know about the certain private struggles that she had. But most recently I read a book about Lucille Ball written by Kathleen Brady. The story was incredible. It was amazing. I was so inspired by the challenges that she faced and overcame as Lucille Ball and getting to where the point where we think of her today. For the first 42 years of her life, she didn't have that kind of explosion of success that she had in her 40s and beyond. So to me, as somebody who's above the age of 40, that gives me a lot of hope. But when she was first kind of coming into her own as a star, and she had married Desi Arnaz, I almost called him Ricky Ricardo, they wanted to buy a home in California. And apparently, the story goes, they uh, found a development of new homes 
and the developer wanted to attract rich people and they weren't really rich yet. They were getting more famous, but they didn't really have like a ton of money at that point. So in order for that developer to attract other stars and to make it more desirable location for rich people, he decided to give Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz a huge financial break if they purchased one of the homes in, in that development. So when Lucy had to furnish this gigantic home, she actually turned to consignment stores. Maybe one of the reasons was because she seemed to be a frugal person having grown up in with financial challenges, maybe that was one of the things that made her want to be more mindful about her spending. But another reason was because she was very mindful about the furniture style that she wanted. There was a huge trend of moving out West and a lot of people either donated or consigned their furniture that may have been more like early American shaker style. And that's what she wanted, that classic look, toile, et cetera. And perhaps they weren't making that kind of furniture in the modern designs, California furniture stores. So in order to get the style that she wanted to cultivate that interior design, she turned to consignment stores. That's another thing that we have in common with Lucille Ball. So somebody who was so glamorous and so rich and so famous, she went to consignment stores. It just kind of annoys me when people look down their nose at it. I'm not talking about going to some junky thrift store. I'm talking about resale, going to eBay for something or other clothing resale sites and buying things that still have the tags on them. They were never worn. The necklace I'm wearing right now is a beautiful designer piece. And it came from a consignment store that's here in town that I love. Buying on consignment can help you to achieve that feeling of abundance, to make you feel like you've arrived maybe ahead of your time. I bought a beautiful luxury car when I was in college. It just happened to be 10 years old, but it had more bells and whistles than the cars that either of my parents drove. And at one point I actually said to my parents, gee, I feel kind of bad driving this really fancy car. Do you want to switch since you're paying for my college education? And they just laughed and said, no, you're paying for it every month. Enjoy it. And so I did. Buying things that have been previously owned can give you a taste of that next level before before you're ready for it. And you can have that feeling of abundance and wealth in your life right now while you wait for your checkbook to catch up with you. <laughs> for me, I have actually found some Lucy memorabilia through consignment stores. Now, I don't necessarily pay a lot for these items if I'm not sure of their authenticity, but I've had one or two occasions where I have purchased an item and I'm, I'm reasonably confident that it was part of her collection. I wouldn't have found it if I hadn't gone into these two different consignment stores. I've also purchased things through eBay that do have a certificate of authenticity. And, you know, as long as I'm not paying something that's going to jeopardize the rest of the bills we have to pay each month. There's really nothing wrong with that. I love adding it to my collection and it's really special to me. If Lucille Ball can do consignment, we can too. I encourage you to check out the books that I mentioned. I think you should try to watch I Love Lucy if you can find it streaming or on TV. And I'll leave you with this. Lucille Ball could have bought any furniture in the world. She could have commissioned furniture, but she recognized the value of consignment in getting exactly what you want. She followed the less is more. So as my kids think that they <laughs> understand Spanish now because they've been listening to Senor Ricky Ricardo, I'll leave you with this. In the words of Ricky Ricardo, menos es más. As Lucy says, less is is more. Thanks for listening to this episode of Little Debbie, a bite-sized version of the podcast Upcycling with Deb. I'm your host, Deb Colometta. You can reach me on Facebook and Instagram at Deb Colometta. I hope you'll get your free downloadable guide on my website, thedebsite.com.